Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode six of Fargo, and this episode is called Rhinoceros. That's going to give me too many return searches on Google, so we're just going to have to go in blind on this one. Um, but it's making me think kind of belligerence, power, like that. And in fairness, where we are in the story, that's kind of could apply to quite a few different characters. The last episode was a really weird one that took me about three hours to completely get after watching it. I was just kind of playing things over in my mind, which is actually the sign of a, of, of a good episode of television that you, you keep thinking about it and you're, you're mulling things over. It was a really interesting episode where it began kind of up here with this high octane attack that I I certainly didn't expect we were just sort of seeing how the Kansas City mob operates and then and then it just sort of went and it was really low and slow and like quite pained at, at times actually I was just sort of like what the fuck is like what what's going on I sort of felt like the whole episode you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, really. And then, oh, you know, back with the butchers showdown between Ed and Charlie and Scarface. That was great. And I th actually, the more I thought about it, appreciated the thematic points of the episode. That they gave us these two great showdowns at the as bookends at the beginning and the end, like I see the horseshoe. But what they also did throughout was give us s the theme of kind of desperation, which they actually started in episode four, if you remember, with our friend Lou Solverson. But with the theme of the of the episode, it starts with essentially this corrupt mafiosa group of Kansas City are, are making a deal with a senior politician in the area like that's that's clear and from my understanding he's basically saying look I've got Reagan in my pocket you know the governor's in my pocket he, he answers my calls during lunch juxtaposed with Reagan making these promises and and he's really he really got what the what his team really got that there was a crisis of confidence is coming out of the Jimmy Carter era era um you know this idea of decaying empire which as, as a Brit I know about all too well and what weird shit happens to people's personal psychology in the midst of a sort of national identity crisis. And then, so you've got like the reality of politics happening over here and the promise of politics happening over here. And even though most people are even probably like, you know, what are the chances? They still have to kind of believe anyway to hold on to something because they're so de desperate and I thought they did that fantastically well it's like taking Lou Solverson's little moment from the end of episode four and then in episode five we have this sort of writ large across the whole of America and I think as kind of told through the eyes of Carl because he is you know on the one hand this cynic who's like you know the government are keeping secrets on this and MK Ultra and every you know everything else. And then he hears one tearful you know one speech from Reagan and he's he's crying and then he's like oh I'm not going to shake his hand you know the guy was in a film it's you know ridiculous and then Reagan's there and he's like shaking his hand off his shoulder you know. <laughs> so I I loved I thought that was excellent the way they characterised Carl that Carl is so many of us it's you know, probably more of us than we'd like to admit are Carl you know we we speak a good game but in reality 
you know, we were optimists. I still think that Dodd made a big mistake in lying to his mother. As I said, it was an unnecessary lie. She'd already declared the war. He's broken trust for absolutely nothing. I think just because of his own misogyny, he wants to be in control. And I think him having this lie over her, feeling like that, he's motivated her into the war, makes him feel more powerful. So that's Dodd's motivation for for doing that. If she finds out, I honestly think she she would do him some damage. At the very least, she's going to be pissed. So I think that was a really, really just one in a string of really stupid decisions by Dodd and I I sincerely hope it comes back to bite him in the ass. I would like that very much. And obviously we have Simone who is lost at sea. Another one of Dodd's mistakes. She's had to suffer through watching him, Dodd, her father, abuse her mother. That one line that she tells him I think it was Mike she tells it like his mum had to had to always smile because if she frowned he'd hit her. She just like such a small moment but it really stuck with me that that was the fear that she was living through and how awful that that would be. And he's basically driven her to the point now where she really fucking hates him. And that I think has leaked out into a general at least disregard for her family. I think she does have feelings for the others, but I don't think she loves them as much as she hates her dad. Otherwise she wouldn't be doing what she's doing with Mike Milligan. She's not in love with him, but he's an irresistible fuck you to her dad, I think primarily. But I think she thinks he has more feelings for her than than he does and that was dispelled very readily in the the last episode ish i think if he had absolutely no feelings for her she'd probably be dead but also i think he's callous enough that he would be able to put aside any kind of feelings he had about vengeance for like you know she is ultimately a tool of intelligence and having her is better than not you know nothing even if she's imperfect so simone has been sent back to spy on the gerhards and basically told you're fucking dead if you don't tell me everything you know i get another surprise your head's in a box like my mate bulo so really one of those episodes it genuinely took me like an hour or two to even realize how i felt about it and i think immediately after the episode i was just kind of numb it's like what happened like what just happened <laughs> a little bit like i've been hit by a truck and then i didn't go straight into the next episode to watch it this is the next morning so i've had kind of an overnight to think it over and actually going through it and you realise how much happened and how much we learned, how much was set up. It was such a really good episode. So I'm really ready for this episode now. Let's have at it. <laughs> Guys, we've got a hot open. Oh, I love this. Do, 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 do. No. Baby, this is your assault out of my You can't just ruin baby, people's baby, lives. No, inside. parade them around on, Main Street on. for something they didn't do. You're not gonna this... prove my end did anything wrong. It's unprovable. <laughs> oh no, so those two being the gifts of the Meiji. Meiji, I love that. Poor Ed. He's not really done much wrong, has he? Oh, he's crying. Look at him. He was gonna buy a butcher's. Oh, poor Noreen. Heard about the fire. You okay? You didn't have to come down. Mrs. Silverson. Ed. 
It feels like the tap might just spin right off the globe these days and take you along with it. What's that for? <laughs> I'm just imagining you parachuting into the Mekong Delta, telling the black pajamas to leave your husband alone. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Could have saved a lot of lives if wives and mothers from both sides came and dragged their full men home by the ear. She's a nice lady. Shut up. <sighs> Idiot. I'm so ready for this episode. I was thinking about Elron the other day. Before. His face. You know? I'm trying to remember. I was ten when they came. Soldiers in uniform with a folded up flag. You were in Chicago, I think. And what would he do now? You know? Because he was the oldest, right? Not dad. Charlie's on the phone. Charlie's got some bad news. Oh, Barry's going to be pissed. I, I get it. You don't have respect for anything. But do you know what a whore's life is? Come on now. Fuck off. A whore's life is five good years, five bad years, and then some half-dick sweat stain grinds you out like a cigarette. Like a goddamn spent cigarette. Oh, my son. Name. You see my goddamn son! Oh. <gasps> yes! Oh. Oh. Cut it out! Come on, Barry! Will somebody <laughs> get him off me? Hansy! Huh? Okay! You get in the belt, kid. Strap or buckle. You think your belt was dad's thing? The kid going. said he was ready. Pathetic. An empire. Pulls. This is pissing me off. He was getting his ass kicked. And then Hansy comes in with the gun and now he's all my with the belt. Fuck. And fuck Hansy. I mean, Bear has given him more respect in five minutes than Dodd's given him this entire series. Play. Compared to that, what have you ever done? Or me? The fuck are you piece of shit? That's my boy. None of your bullshit! Not today. You'll kill us all, you split this family apart! Now tell me what happened. Wow. Bring back my grandson. No excuses. <clears throat> this better be state secret level information. Who all? Right. They're going to that town in Minnesota. So it's behind where her. the judge. Laverne. Yeah. Laverne. And I want you. You're gonna. Get the hell out of here. You're gonna kill him for me. Your dad. He's not. Any last message for your dad? When I see him? Yes! Tell him. Kiss my grits. Kiss my grits? Fuck you! Those are your last words. Fuck you. Come on, you can do better. <laughs> Can't! You're shit at dying, you know that. <laughs> Beware the job, job, Boyd. Shun the funniest man of such. Fuck. And as if an office thought he stood, the Jabberwock with eyes aflame oh. can whiff me the, the Toki wood. And burbled as it came. Stop it! One, two, one, two, and through and through. Damn, the Mike. blade did snicker snack. He left it dead. And with its head, he went galumphing back.
I'm going to move these, okay? No, actually, no. Those are my... No, no, put them down. What is... She's got a serious problem with these magazines. Do you think... Uh, I, I know there's a lot of questions, but I just... I got a... Um, I got this seminar tomorrow, Life Spring, and I, I got to drive up to Sioux Falls. Tomorrow. Uh, well, now, I, I got five debts since Saturday, including the one tonight in the burned down butcher shop. And your husband is currently in jail, so I wouldn't count on getting there early. Oh, no. <laughs> That's terrible. Reports are 15 more bodies, 15 more bodies up in Fargo. This is a turf war. Me and Ed, we're just bystanders. Him with the shop and, and me just trying to actualize fully, you know? Be the best me I can be because these are modern times, you know? And a woman, well, she just doesn't have to be a wife and a mother no more. She can be, there's nothing she can't be. <laughs> You're a little touched, aren't you? It's <laughs> not there's anything wrong with that, don't get me wrong. It's just the, the time and place in which you're... Well, you know, if you mean I got dreams, then yeah. Uh, and maybe I don't see it all like everybody else, but I got plans. And we, we got plans, and, and you can't just come in here yeah, and Peggy, derail. They tried to kill your husband. Life's a journey, you know? That's what John Hanley Sr. says. He's the founder of Leaf Spring. Life's a journey, and the one thing you don't do on a journey is stay in one place. Deep. We're gonna check your car for blood. Microscopically, I mean. Which, you'd be amazed at what we can find on the atomic level these days. No, I mean, yeah. you can't do that, of course, without permission from the owner, you know, oh, so. Oh, we got permission, about an hour ago. You sold the car to Sonny Greer, didn't you? Earlier at the body shop. And Sonny now is the owner of record. And he was more than happy. No. No, you can't. That's... Hold on. Peggy. Peggy, the jig is up. I sat in your living room last night and gave you the chance. Not to mention, there's a war going on up in Fargo that you may have started when you ran over that Gerhardt boy in Peggy's car. You or, 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 or Peggy or both. This is all just so crazy. Hmm? And I can't stop thinking about that book, Noreen's book. It's about this guy who, every day, he, he pushes this mm -hmm. rock up this hill like a boulder. Mm -hmm. And every night, it just rolls back down. But he doesn't stop. You know, he just, he keeps going. Mm -hmm. And he wakes up every day and he starts pushing. By which I, I, I guess I'm, I'm saying, it doesn't matter what they throw at me. I'm going to take care of what's mine. And These boys aren't going to rest until you're dead, son. Possibly Peggy, too. I want a lawyer. <sighs> Ooh, I, 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 I know Go ahead. I'm, I'm asking you for... You hear that, Sonny? Mm -hmm. There's a crisis at the highest level, so who do they call? The best lawyer in town. Aren't you the only lawyer in town, Carl? Yes, but that's because I scared away all my... Oh, Amazing! Would appear I'm a little unstable. Hey okay, there, Carl. Want me to tell Lou you need a few hours? There may Tom Bush, son. Oh, God, drunken lawyer. And ready to run circles around the inferior minds of the Rock County Sheriff's Department. Lou's a state cop, Carl. Shut up, sonny. We'll need you to drive, however. <laughs> this is so good. How come after you hit that fella, you didn't just drive to the hospital? Or wave down a passing motorist and ask him to call the cops? Decisions you make in a dream, you know? I'll tell you what, if it was me and we had to run, I wouldn't look back. 
This is Ed's house. He grew up here. His mom yeah. <laughs> washing his undies. His father taking his paper to the commode. You ask me how come I buy all these magazines? I'm living in a museum of the past. Oh, Peg. I kind of love her a bit. I can't lie. Uh-oh. I just thought that was going to be the cops. Fuck! No, no. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. If you've got a house place in the basement or the, the attic, go to that. What about you? Hey, go Shit. now. Shit! And don't come out. No! No matter what you hear. Please don't kill him, please. No! Right. Don't! Right. Fuck off! Help you fellows with something? Hope so. No, 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 no. No. Ed who? Ed who? Oh. Ed. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah, you just missed him. Whole squad took him to the station about an hour ago. Don't you fucking dare, Hansy. And that's the uh, son. I could fill a steamer trunk with the amount of stupid I think you are, but no, that that's where he went. Fucking split screen. I'm not ready, and the cat is here. What do you want, my boy? Are we can have a quick cuddle, are we? Come on then, come on then. You're just gonna sit there making love eyes at me, distracting. Hmm? Hmm? Then you'll probably hear you purring on the microphone. <laughs> Come on then. Come on you. Stick you to mummy. And take you to mummy. <coughs> He's so funny. He's got a massive love for me at the moment. So we just had to do lots of cuddling in here though. Which should prepare me nicely for this, which I think is gonna be shit. Play. Don't you kill my Hank. Do not kill my Hank. Oh, I'm gonna kill you, Dodd. That's what I thought. Do not. Fuck! Please. Don't do this. Here we go. No, Peggy, Peggy. <gasps> I'll take it. 